Okay, so the concept is, work with me, um, create structures that are hexagonal in nature with a truncated floor that are made out of this material that I've been developing um, that I call plasticrete. Um, and I make it by taking many, many layers of very thin plastic and wrapping it. This one I've just wrapped around a cardboard tube on the inside and the outside. You don't have to really do it on the inside, but this one I did. This is slightly thicker plastic. And what happens is they fuse together and they become a solid structure, right? So this was one tube that was in the sand. I poured hot sand inside. It came up to about here. This is the area that didn't get fused. Basically fairly consistent all the way through on the thickness. So you can see how it went from this to this. So you get a lot of reduction because all the air is escaping and you get, you end up with, now this by itself is not thick enough, but you just rewrap it and you get this lamination where the sand is encrusted into it and creates this very hard compressive force and you just keep wrapping it. So um, the idea is to take this basic concept of plastic film, many, many layers, fusing them together and creating these large scale structures that are in this shape, right? So this is the floor, very rudimentary, but this is the floor and these are the walls and this is the roof. And the idea is to take this basic shape and make from that, you gotta roll, there you go, keep going, keep going, keep going, you got it. Um, some sort of contained space. So you have a bedroom, you've got a kitchen, you've got all the things that are nice to have, place to take a shit, um, take a shower and a space to just be in. But instead of a rectilinear space, you're now putting it into a hexagonal format. Uh, the reason, the advantage of this hexagonal format is it utilizes for, it utilizes space much more efficiently. Um, and then with this hexagonal format, you can take them and connect them, right? So they're connected and now they're very stable. Now sitting on just this infinitesimally small point, it wants to tip. Once you connect them, you take out that tippy. Um, and you have a stable structure just by connecting it right there. Um, the idea is to cut them a little bit of an angle and then add another one here and then another one here and then here and then here and, then here. <laughs> and you go around and you create this ring of hexagonal tubes. Each one not necessarily um, not necessarily occupied, but let's not get into the weeds yet, Pete. Um, so you have this ring now that is very stable. These back portions here will have some flexibility, but basically you're in compressive here and compression here, and you have some tension lines in the back end. So you create this very strong ring that goes around. Each ring is a self-contained living apparatus. Um, and that would be fine just in and of itself. Um, part of the structure is from here, you have this ring that goes around and you have these connections between the rings. You create these spokes, if you will, pulling them in tension again and creating an even more stable structure. And this horizontal lines can become um, floors. They become an area that you can walk on. So you have this cave area here that looks out onto the horizon and a space that looks in to a common area and then there's a core so there's a cave common core thing going on <laughs> um and that in and of itself would be amazing but yet there's more um what you do is when you have this ring it goes all the way around and it's floating in the water so one of the applications is actually floating or 
regardless, you have this here, you can stack them in either direction. You can go on the top, if you make them just a little bit smaller, they can go up. If you make them on the bottom a little bit bigger, they can go down. Um, and so you can have this growth of this structure and you can, lots of things you can do with that. Um, so one of the things with the growth is in the water, you can continuously add them on the bottom and the, the structure slowly floats up out of the water. Um, by just continually adding and attaching them, the uh, unit will, will rise up out of the water and you can make them large enough so that some of the um, activity from Mother Nature might be somewhat mitigated. Um, what else? Do you have any questions? <laughs> um, how far can you go? How far can I go? Yeah, building. Uh, I, it's, you're kind of limited by the depth of water. Um, if you have a shallow, if you're working in a shallow area and you only have a, a couple of tens of meters to go down, then once you hit the bottom, it's much more difficult. But once you hit the bottom, then you could, you have a much more stable structure. Stable. Um, and if you have a lot of space underneath, you can keep going down as far as you want. So I'm not quite sure where the ratio, whether it's going to be like an iceberg or most of it's underwater. Um, I would like to see a lot of it above water, but what you're doing is you're creating growth. You're creating a, a sub, a sub um, something for life to anchor onto. Mm. Um, so you're creating an area where carbon can be sequestered. So as it rises up, it's dragging with it all this biofilm, which is going to be added onto, um, and all this 